Hi folks, welcome back. Today I'm uh, sitting beside my 1943 World War II era hydraulic Rockford planer. It's probably the most modern planer there is today. They don't make them anymore. It uses hydraulics for everything, not like the old belt driven or cog driven ones. Thus, it's a really powerful machine. Yesterday, it reminded me how powerful it was. Now, I kind of hesitated to publish this video, uh, not because I'm having a bad hair day, but had plenty worse. But because I screwed up, kind of had a problem yesterday, and doggone it, I, I try to show you all the bad things that happen, and not, not because I want to, but because I'm hoping that you don't make the same mistakes I do. Yesterday, I was working on this Bridgeport Mill bed, finishing it up. I got in a hurry, got complacent, didn't check every little thing, and the planer reminded me who's boss. This is a nice machine, isn't it? This one's got all the accessories, even equipped with Don lean guards nowadays. Sorry, Don. <laughs> Don will be back with us a couple of weeks. We're still waiting out COVID. Kind of got a little bit of uptick around here. So a couple of weeks, we hope it'll be calmed down enough where Don and I can get back together. Stay tuned. See what the heck I did. Hi folks, welcome back. Just doing a little bit of uh, prep work to get ready to finish up this mill table on the planer. Just got these two sides to do, then I can get it off and trim down that uh, four foot straight edge that I need to check this with before I put it into the heat treating oven. But got a few things to do here. First of all, I gotta remove the the Don leaning protecting guards. He's not here today, so that's not going to be a problem. And next, I'm going to do a little suck up and then I'm going to warm up the planer. Stick around. got to flip the head over to where it comes down at a 42 degree angle this angle here over here we'll go ahead and while I've got it set up like this we'll do that angle and then we'll finish this flat here god I need a bigger shop a friend of mine made these for me in fact his name's Ken and he was the first person to ever run out of here with a butcher knife by my wife for parking on her grass. Anyway, he ground these up for me. Can you see these? These bits are what I'm going to be using. Uh, this one lets me get underneath that dovetail. And this one lets me go down on the dovetail and get close to the surface of the table. Friend of mine ground these up for me years ago. Thank you, Ken. Oh, Ken, give me a call. We need to talk. Anyway, let me get the head flipped around and we'll go from there.
create a third of the speed that this thing can go. It goes so fast it walks it off its mounting boat. Basically now I'm going to get this over underneath the workpiece and then lower it down on this and get it to the right angle so I can go all the way down. I want the flat of this to be at a little slight angle to the, the way down here. I want it just like that so I can go as deep as I need to be right there Now we have that down to where we need it to be. We can go all the way there. And now we need to adjust it over. Because see what happens here is I'm cutting this bottom edge right in here. And this tool follows and goes down this way for the depth. I don't have to move it this way. I just need to be going straight down this angle. Looking to see if I'm touching. I'm touching. And I can tell I've got an even depth scratch all the way down there. So, we should be lined up. I'm gonna go get something. What the? Either Don's been here or my wife is messing with me. Uh, Guess I need to put one of my security gate locks on this door so nobody can get in but me. All right. Took a nice slight cut the whole way. See if it starts at the beginning, and it did. I'm going to lower it down a little bit. got this thing going full stroke because uh, pretty soon I'm going to have to start picking that up because it's underneath the overhang.
this little shore one, it may pick it up, but I, I don't ever like to do it that way. It's not hard to pick up. Running full swing and slow like this gives me a chance to make sure everything's okay. up under there. Okay, that surface there is planed and ready to go. Now we just got to do this one. Alright, we've come to the last surface we have to plane. We've planed the top. Well, let me explain to you about the last surface. The last surface is this right here and it's where all the weight sits on the table up against the saddle. This is the hardest one to plane. Not because it's big or anything like that, but it needs to be exactly the same height as it's made on the other side of the table. But I have to get underneath this lip here, so I have to use the specialty tools that can allow me to go under there. And so that means I can't just set one up and cut it and then move to the other side. I have to change tools. And now I've got to get it all the way back to the same height as that side. And one guy asked me how I was going to do it, and I said, the tool for that is a planer gauge. Now, when I did that other side, before I took the tool out, I set this on the table and adjusted it to the exact height of the tool. So now... I take and put this over here on this side and I set the tool to that height. Kind of neat. neat. Don thinks he needs one of these but silly guy doesn't have a planer. So. And there are other ways of doing what I'm doing but this is pretty unique to this tool. So let's get after it. Now my job is to get the tool over here. Maybe I'll move this around some. I gotta get in there. Let me get some different Do glasses. Anything. I'm gonna set this gauge to this height. Right there. This is a Stirrit brand, and it's got different kind of accessories that you can screw on to get different heights. Got a scribe part on it. You can go up any higher and stack them. It does all kinds of good things. But you don't need one. Don. Don't have a planer, Don. All right, I'm going to leave that adjusted just in case something happens.
Well, I promised you I'd show you the screw-ups too. And I made a big one. Now, I don't know what happened. But for some reason, this tool, even though I tightened the bejesus out of it, dropped down too far. This is... Okay, let's try this. This is a step that's not supposed to be there. For some reason, my tool dropped down as I was going in and took a deeper cut. I don't know if I accidentally hit it or what. That has been known to happen. But I do know that ain't right. So what do we do? This first step up here is the depth I need. That step shouldn't be there. Now in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. It would just have an eighth inch less width of the bed. But I've been thinking about it and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I can either leave it and just go ahead and finish off with it set to the, the height that's right here. Or I can take it all the way down to that level and then use turkite on the saddle to raise it back up, which is what I'm leaning towards right now. The saddle shows uneven wear on that surface anyway, and it's worn down quite a bit, so I was thinking about building it up, and I would just have to build it up with about 15 thousandths more turkite. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to go ahead and finish this pass all the way over, and then I'll make up my mind if I want to take the rest of it and to build it up. Or just leave it alone. But um, crap happens. I have no idea what I'm doing.
explain what happened this time. I took a big gouge out of the bottom of the, or the back end. I'll show it to you in a picture. And the reason I took a big gouge is I was gotten a little bit greedy on my first pass in there and I took too much. And I had not locked this head down. When I was using it to go underneath, you have to unlock it. And I did not lock it and I was taking too big of a cut and it wiggled and dug in, took a big chip out. Scared the bejesus out of me. Again, I just knew that the tool bit had shattered, but it hadn't. It just chipped off a piece off the end of the, uh, the way, which looks like crap, but it's mine, and it won't affect it in any way. But it made me go ahead and take it down to the next step of where I'm going to go and put Turkite on the, uh, the saddle. Kind of made up my mind for me. So basically what I'm going to do is finish this side out and then switch over and take the other side down to the exact same height. And that should be a good enough surface to, to get going on. Just goes to show you guys, I've been doing this quite a while now and you get in a hurry and you make mistakes. So don't do what I do. All right, I had to reset the depth of the blade out of the holder because I was getting too close to this. Now I can reach all the way underneath there. One of my viewers made a comment that they used to set the tool down to where it would kick out and have enough clearance as it came back. Well, maybe I need a picture of that because the way I have to set this specially ground bit I don't see any way to do that, so I'll just keep lifting it. Okay, wish me luck. I've got to rough it out some more in there, and then we're going to get down to this level and take the final pass through there. I brought my little digital readout over here so I can see it better. I've got the top locked. Let's see if we can just keep on going with no problems.
side zero and this side same area I'll get my hand on it tight there you go it's as close as I can get it well folks I had to do it a different way I just have to be real careful now starting off because I don't have any guidelines it's zero on both sides. Just have to be careful how I'm going. Check a lot more often. Well, that's what it looks like now. Got one boo-boo. In fact, that's why that little lever is bolted tight. I did a straight edge one time and then accidentally hit it. Tonight's was a different one. I hadn't had that one tight. Well, okay, now we can pull this one off the table and it will go on and be scraped. Got quite a pile of stuff waiting to be scraped over here. A few things there. A straight edge over there. We'll get after it. Thanks for watching. Oh, some things over there. Hi, Bob. Well, thanks for watching. We'll continue on later.